Many of the products we use in daily life are found right here in the supermarket aisle or your neighborhood drugstore. You may not have thought about it, but the containers holding your medicine, shampoo, motor oil, smartphones, and other devices are molded and shaped by tool and die makers, such as the men working here at FGH in Denville. Fred Gudekunz is a veteran tool and die man at FGH. Here he is using a machine known as a grinder. And what's happening is there's a wheel that's made of a stone and it's rotating at 1,000 RPMs to remove material to create a finish on, a, on this particular case, aluminum. And uh, this is a finishing process to bring it down to the size within tenths of an inch. This is uh, going to be a cooling block that's going to go on a extrusion blow mold uh, for making bottles. Uh, all sorts of products go into it. Medicine goes into it. Uh, you see it on aspirin bottles. You see uh, syrup, mayonnaise, different kind of powders for uh, uh, muscle builders, shampoo bottles, and detergent bottles. In 2015, Apple CEO Tim Cook famously said on 60 Minutes that one of the reasons his company cannot manufacture iPhones in the United States is because not enough American workers have the, quote, skills required to build here. He specifically cited a shortage of tool and die makers. Some critics disagreed. They say Americans have the skills and many more are training to become tool and die workers. It is not, however, an overnight endeavor. There's a lot to learn. Well, we start them out by at least introducing them to the shop because they come in here and they don't know anything. I do have three boys that came right out of high school. Never had any kind of metal shop experience. So what we do is we put them around, we show them how to clean the machines to keep them up, and then we put them on machines and we show them what to do. And it will be a eight machine at a time. Uh, so they learn it. It takes about four years to learn different parts of the shop trades. The advancement of technology has actually made the apprenticeship process easier. Computers now do the math for humans. We don't have to go to graphs or uh, books anymore is to find out different geometries and formulas in order to find out what we have to do. A lot of it now is done with the CNC's and uh, computer programs. Computer control machines is what a CNC is. Uh, they used to be called uh, tape machines and then they got away from the ticker tapes and now they went into just the CNC, compu computer control. That's where Jorge Vital comes in. He is a CNC programmer at FGH. My role is here, like I said, um, you know, I do the programming and it's uh, almost like a language with the CNC machine again. We'll read it and um, whatever, de depending on what I program here, those guys out there in the CNC machines would, um, would um, you know, get what I program here. So technically, yeah, they, 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 they depend on what I give them on the, on the program. As with virtually every business today, tool and die makers need to seamlessly combine software, hardware, and manpower in the manufacturing process. So like I said, um, I usually just go ahead and um, program whatever I get from the junior department. It's not all on the job training, however. To run the computer department in a tool and die shop, you need to earn your college degree. Really focus in school. School is also like a, a you know, it's very important to learn, you know, whatever you, they teach you over there, because later down the road in life, they'll definitely need it. Especially like, like I said, math. Never thought math would be that helpful in this, uh, ma uh, this particular uh, uh, machine, uh, sh machine shop. You know, I've been getting like, parts where I actually need to put some metrometry uh, skills in here. I pretty much know what I've later on had to like, you know, figure out my own. And, uh, but yeah, definitely sometimes I do get, need to go back to my notes and sometimes, you know, try, try to uh, get my uh, answer from those notes I've learned in school. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in high school, it is recommended that students should take math courses, especially trigonometry, geometry, and courses in blueprint reading, 
metalworking, and drafting. As for teaching and training apprentice workers, many students are not even aware that tool and die can be a career. Joseph Ungst is only 20 years old and has already been working for a year and a half at FGH. He started in high school by learning how to weld. Unks told us that a high school teacher at Morris County Vocational School informed him and another student about the opportunity. That student, 20-year-old David Widget, is now his co-worker and, in effect, approaching the end of his apprenticeship. Um, to be honest, welding, I went to high school for welding, so I came out with a welding certification. And uh, I know they do, I knew they do welding here, so I was interested in coming here. And um, I wasn't really fully interested in machining. I didn't really know anything about it, but it was here and it was a good opportunity. And it turns out I love it. I went to school uh, right up the street at the Morris County Vocational School of Technology. I got it through the internship at my school. So, and it was, um, I had been looking around for open welding spots. And I had heard through somebody that there was um, some TIG welding over here. So that's what I was interested in. You learn something new every day. At like every single day, there's always something that you find or learn that you had never even heard about, you know? I mean, I've been here for close to two years, and every single day, like I said, I'm still hearing about things that I've never even heard of. And there's so much interesting stuff to learn about. and. It's incredible all the work that goes into just making a single plastic bottle. There's some machines that are a lot harder to run than others. And um, I mean, it's like, it comes slowly. You know, you gotta, you gotta work at it every day, but um, it's just the tight tolerances are hard to, to make sometimes because if you do even the slightest, you know, like let's say you have one chip underneath your, uh, your part in your jaw, it could be, the piece could be scrapped. Many of the tool and die makers say they love what they do and find it interesting to work at the FGH company. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's guys that are in this shop that have been here for years and years and there's still stuff to learn. There's never, there's never too much to learn, you know? You can always keep learning in a shop like this. I went to high school for welding, so I came out with a welding certification. And uh, I know they do, I knew they do welding here, so I was interested in coming here. And um, I wasn't really fully interested in machining. I didn't really know anything about it, but it was here and it was a good opportunity. And it turns out I love it. Otto Huber has been a veteran worker at the FGH company more than four decades. He started out as an apprentice in Europe. He loves what he does and continues to be a tool and die maker. Anybody works on different things. The shop is small enough so we don't have a person who just polishes all day or somebody does just... Uh, it's kind of overall interesting here to, to work uh, because the shop is small enough and uh, we have more like that, uh, diverse jobs and things like that we can do. We asked Huber if he had to do it all over again would he become a tool and die man? I probably would not go into this uh, trade anymore. Uh, it's uh, it's a lot of war a lot of the uh, tool and die businesses died and uh, they're gone. But it seems like they have a little bit of a combat again because uh, a lot of the productions are being lost to uh, China and some other countries. But yet we still need tool and die maker, obviously, for. Uh, as prototypes, uh, repair work, and so on. Like I said, I'm 45 years involved with that, and ironic, uh, now in the computer age, we all have to learn, obviously, the CNC, all the computer, uh, digital things, but yet, what I'm doing right now, I still do that old-fashioned thing we did 45 years ago, we still have to do it by hand. We, st we have better, uh, polishing uh, equipment but still it's still the old-fashioned way the old-fashioned way just like to clean to clean a toilet is the old-fashioned way we still need to do that I, I believe eventually it's gonna be uh, more work yes even though 10 years ago 20 years ago a lot of the the, uh, the production in this country went down or actually it went overseas uh, and for cheaper labor but I have a feeling it's a comeback Will it make a comeback? Many states in the federal government have renewed efforts to emphasize a technical career. 
and according to the U.S. Department of Labor, tool and die job opportunities are expected to increase over the next few years. Explore the possibilities with your high school guidance counselor. Mark Montaigne, TBN.